For me, Christmas as a child was much different than Christmas as an adult. Because when I was a kid, it seemed like Christmas would never get here. Like it, it took two or three years for Christmas to come around, and now as an adult it comes every other month. But I can remember as a child finally going to bed on Christmas Eve. See, in our house you were allowed to open one gift on Christmas Eve, just one. And usually it was a roll of the dice, you just grabbed one, and I usually got underwear or socks. And it was like the worst ever. So now I just, I cannot wait for Christmas morning. But you lay there as a child and you can't go to sleep. Am I right? And, and you try to do things. You roll over and you twist and you turn and, and you finally fall asleep. And, and you, you wake up and you think, all right, it's time. And then you, you realize it's like three o'clock in the morning. And so you have to try to go back to sleep. Or maybe you sneak into the living room to look underneath the Christmas tree, but you're afraid to turn any lights on or make any noise, and so you run back to your room, and finally you wait as long as you can, and, and you get your parents up. But I know for me as a child, the thing that I guess was the toughest was just not knowing what I was going to get, hoping that I was going to get what I had written down on my list. The list that you sent to Santa or the list that you gave to your parents or your grandparents, whoever. But it was just this, it was this hope. Because when I was a kid, my dad was in uh, Bible college when I was little. He was a preacher. Uh, and so we didn't get everything we wanted. See, I feel like kids now, they hand you a list and they just go, well, this is what I'm getting. You know, make sure you get the right thing. When I was a kid, you just hoped, please. You know, I had these top three things. If I could just get one of those things, it would be awesome. And so as you went into the living room, if your toys and things were laid out under the tree, you would be looking for that one particular thing. I can remember one year for me, it was a, a, a rifle, a sniper rifle. Now, before you start thinking that's terrible, it was a TV show that came on called SWAT. And they had a team that went in and rescued hostages. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a hostage rescuer. And so I knew if I had this rifle that that would send me that direction. And, and I looked everywhere and, and finally kind of in the back of the tree, there it was. And oh, it was the greatest Christmas because I got the SWAT rifle and I was the coolest kid in our neighborhood. I remember I got a little bit older and it was a handheld video game. Now kids, I know you're thinking not what I'm thinking. All right, it looked like an oversized, it looked like an oversized calculator. And it had a screen like a calculator. And the game I wanted was a quarterback game. And so on this side of the screen, there was one dot. In front of the one dot was two dots. That was the offense. Across the line, there were two dots. There was one dot, and that was the defense. And you took off, and you tried to run your dot past the other dots. <laughs> And you think, oh, you got to be kidding me. But in my day, that was huge, mind-boggling. Last gift I opened that Christmas, it was that game. And it was awesome. I can remember the year I wanted a new bike. And mom and dad kept saying, I don't know if you're going to get a bike. Bikes are ex they're expensive. We don't have a lot of money. And we went all the way through Christmas, and we opened everything, and we were done. And we were cleaning up. And my dad left the room, and I was disappointed because I'd hoped, just please, please, please let me get this bike. And I didn't. And I try not to be too disappointed because I got some other neat things. But I didn't notice dad had left. And all of a sudden, he came rolling down the hallway with this bike. Man, I screamed. It was yellow, bright yellow with a black seat and black grips on the handlebars. And man, this was the greatest bike I'd ever seen. Didn't even want to get dressed. Just wanted to get in my pajamas and get on that bike and go. Mom's like, whoa, 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 we got to eat and you got to put on clothes. But I remember riding the bike the rest of that day. Do you remember what it was like to hope you got something for Christmas? Do you remember that family? Can you remember something and you, you just, oh, if I could get that Christmas will be perfect, and you got it? Can you remember what that felt like? I mean, you couldn't wait to, to tell your friends. You didn't have, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't post it to social media. I got what I wanted. You had to wait to maybe make a phone call or find your friends in the neighborhood and say, hey, I got what I wanted. Man, it was, it was so amazing to get that gift, and your hope had been fulfilled. Ah, oh, that's exactly where the Jewish people were. The children of Israel, they had been hoping for thousands of years for God to send His Messiah. And they couldn't wait for Him to come. And John said in John 1.14, And the Word became flesh 
and made his dwelling among us. And that's the, the Christmas story all in this one verse. And Jesus had come to bring hope into this world. And understand that the Jewish people, they had been living as slaves and, and under the oppression of governments throughout their entire existence. And so they were ready for the Messiah to come and to free them from that. And they could not wait for him to be there. And so the Christmas story is a story of hope. The Christmas story is a story that God loves us. That God wants to give us the gift of His Son Jesus because He wants to have a relationship with us. The Word became flesh so that our relationship with God could be restored. The Word became flesh so that we could become children of God. What an amazing gift that God gave us. And so now we don't have to hope like we did as children. Oh, I just hope. I just hope God loves me enough. I just hope I do enough good things so that I can go to heaven one day. No, we have this reasonable expectation that what God promised is going to come true. And if He sent His Son Jesus to step into our world, into flesh, then He's going to send Jesus back one day. And we're going to be able to go and spend an eternity with God. You see, our hope moves from a childlike hope of I hope I get it to I am expecting to get it because I know that God is faithful. My hope is in the promises that we find in Scripture. And so Christmas is a story of hope. It's the story of knowing that we are loved by a, an almighty, powerful, holy God who wants nothing more than to have a relationship with with his creation. Christmas is a story of hope. And I love Christmas. I love the excitement that goes with Christmas. I know there's all the got to get the right gifts and all that kind of stuff. But once all that is done, I love Christmas because it's so much fun. I love being with family. That's one of the things I love more than anything. And so we get together with Manda's family and we get together with my family and we just get to enjoy that. We get to give gifts to our girls and watch them open. Sometimes it's things that they didn't know they were getting. Other times it's things that they were like, I know I'm getting that. But I love doing that. I love Christmas. I love the food that you really only get at Christmas. Sausage balls. Most people don't make those except for Christmas and I love those things. My mother-in-law makes this special Chex Mix, and it is so good, but she only makes it at Christmas. So Christmas for me is a time of hope. It's a time of excitement. It is a time of joy, but it's not always that way. And I'm not talking about just people in the world. I'm not talking about just people who don't know Jesus Christ, who don't celebrate Christmas because of Jesus' birth. But I'm talking about even those of us that know Jesus. Because sometimes we lose hope, right? Sometimes we find ourselves in situations that seem very, very hopeless and we should be enjoying life and we should be enjoying the birth of Jesus and Christmas and yet we just can't find that hope. Because maybe you lost someone this year. Maybe somebody died this year that you loved with all of your heart. So Christmas is tough. Or maybe they didn't die. Maybe just a relationship was broken. A, a marriage? A relationship between a parent and a child? Between best friends? And you've lost something this year. And so Christmas just doesn't seem the same. Or maybe you went out on a limb and your kids or your parents or somebody wanted something so desperately that you just you kept spending. And you spent and you spent and the credit card just kept getting swiped, kept getting swiped. And down deep, you know in January those bills are going to come due and you have no idea how you're going to pay for them. And maybe Christmas seemed good at the time, but you know there's a dark shadow around the corner. And you don't know how you're going to get it paid. So your hope is diminishing. Or maybe you stepped into a doctor's office. You didn't expect it to be that big of a deal, but the doctor said, listen, I've got bad news. There's some things going on with you that we didn't expect. 
And your next year, we're not sure what it's going to look like. We're not sure what we're going to be able to do. We're not sure what your prognosis is for 2017. It may be your most difficult year yet. And maybe, just maybe, your hope is struggling. Maybe the circumstances of life just have you down. And God understands. And what I want you to understand is that God wants you to be filled with hope. God wants you to be filled with the hope that He will carry us through anything that comes in 2017. Whether it's one of our best years or whether it's one of our toughest years yet. The Word became flesh. He made His dwelling among us. Jesus became a person so that you and I could have hope even in the most desperate of situations. There's a verse that I want to read to you. This doesn't come from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. This is not a part of the Christmas story, but this is a word of encouragement that I think Paul wants to give to us toward the end of his book, uh, his letter that he wrote to the Romans in Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. And here's what he said. May the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to read that to you again because I want you to grab this. I want this to get, if you're struggling with hope right now, I want this to bring you back. If you're in the midst of hope and and, and things are going great for you, then I want you to think about it for the other people around you who may be struggling. May the God of hope, where does our hope come from? It comes from God. Fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him. And I know it's hard to trust. And I know when you get those bad reports or the bills seem impossible to overcome or that relationship is broken, or that person is taken away from you. I know, but you trust in God because He wants to fill you with His joy and His peace. He wants you to be full of hope so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That you and I may overflow like like hope is just going to pour out of us onto people around us. So if we've got hope, if we, if we believe in the gift of Jesus Christ, if we have that relationship with God, and even through difficult times we trust God, and God gives us His peace and His joy, then we just overflow with this hope, and it spills on to people around us. And you might be the one that helps people make it through the day that find hope again. You had a chance to do this, family. Because several weeks ago, I came to you and I said, there's a family in our community that needs help. There's a mom who's had her 12th hip surgery, and it's not working. And she's on a wound vac right now, just trying to get the infection out so they can make that hip work like it's supposed to. And the dad of that family works two full-time jobs just to make ends meet. And I told you about it. And I said they need help. And you know what you did, family? You gave almost $2,400 in one week. But you know what we did? We gave hope to that family. We went shopping and we bought things for the kids. Things that they wanted that they never dreamed that they would get. Why? Because you were overflowing with hope. We were able to buy them clothes. Able to buy them a coat. Their son's coat had been stolen last Friday. The only coat that he had. We were able to give him a coat. And they woke up this morning. I haven't heard from them, but I can only imagine what their Christmas was like. As this family poured hope into that family. When we were talking to her earlier this week, when we dropped the stuff off, she said to us, you know what? My son came up to me and he said, Mom, why would people who don't even know me think I'm worthy? To receive gifts. Isn't that amazing? Why would people think I'm worthy? And she said, because God thinks you're worthy. And because God uses people who love Him to love us. This family 
was at the end of their rope. They didn't know how they would give their kids a Christmas at all. But this church family came together and you overflowed with hope. And it just poured into somebody else. And what that mom said to her kids was, now we're going to do better. We're going to get to a better place. And you know what we're going to do when God blesses us that way? We're going to bless other people. And they're going to have a story of hope. Listen, Christmas is the greatest story of hope ever. God loved you so much that He wrapped His Son up in flesh and He sent Him down to this world to live and to die for you and for me. And so when hope seems gone, when you seem like you can't take another step, when you go, God, I can't do any more, you listen to God whisper in your ear, I love you. I loved you so much, I gave you the gift of my son. Let me fill you with joy and peace and hope so that you and I overflow hope onto the world around us. Christmas is all about hope. Hope in the middle of hopelessness, but hope in the middle of a great life. So wherever you are today, whether you're full of hope or you are screaming desperately for hope, I pray that you feel God's love today and that you will accept God's love in the form of His Son, Jesus, as the greatest gift to you. Would you bow your heads and let's think for a minute. Let's pray. Father, would you fill us right now with your presence so that we can look into hope or look into hopelessness and just know that you're there for us in every situation. So Father, as we look at our own lives this morning, I pray that we are depending on you. I pray that we want to give you the gift of us today. And that we can celebrate knowing that you love us. And Jesus gave his all for us. So speak to our hearts right now. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, it's time for you to think about Christmas right now. Maybe to think about Christmas in a way that you've never thought about it before. Maybe you never realized that Jesus came for you. That no matter how bad you are, no matter, no matter how bad life may seem, Jesus gave His gift for you. But if you don't accept the gift, you have no hope for a future. So if you believe that Jesus is God's Son, if you are willing to accept Him, you can be baptized into Christ, you can have your sins washed away, and you can become clean. Why? Because Jesus became flesh for you. And then God's going to give you the Holy Spirit to live inside. So what better gift to give to God today than to give Him you? That's what's on His list. Okay, That is at the top of His list is that He wants to have a relationship with every person. So why don't you give yourself to Him today? Or maybe you're here and you're already a Christian, you're already a, a, a baptized believer, but you've just had a tough time and, and you need God to give you hope again. Ask Him to give you hope. If you have hope, then be ready to let that overflow to others. If you need prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray for you. We'll pray for you publicly. We'll pray for you privately. Whichever will help meet your needs the most. But right now is your time to decide. And we're going to sing a song. And this is my favorite Christmas song. It's not going to seem like maybe an invitation song because it's upbeat, but it's joy to the world. And that's what we are celebrating today. So would you stand with me?